Hey and welcome, um, I'm Jessica and today's video is going to be kind of a fun video. I thought I would do an assumptions about homeschooling video and talk about whether they're myths or whether they're truths, but this is going to be just for me and my family. I'm not going to be speaking for all homeschoolers, but I want to talk about assumptions around homeschooling and whether they're true for us or not. So I have compiled a list on my phone of different assumptions that I've either read about on the internet, heard other people talk about, or had people personally say to me. So the first one is that when you homeschool, you get to sleep in as late as you want, and you get to go to bed as late as you want, and just kind of set your own sleep schedule. So for us, for our family, that particular homeschool assumption is pretty true. Um, I mean, within reason, okay? So our kids can go to bed pretty much when they want, depending on what we have going on the next day. Um, some days we have stuff after school like dance or baseball and things where we have to get school done in kind of a timely manner. So we may have to get started a little earlier, or we might have something fun going on. Like today we went to the zoo, so we wanted to get up at a decent time to get to the zoo before and have plenty of time before it closed. So stuff like that. But typically speaking, my kiddos do get to go to bed sort of when they want. They go to bed between usually 11 and 12. And I am saying midnight, like 11 p.m. and midnight. That's when our kids go to bed. And then they wake up between like 9 and 10 usually. 10's kind of pushing it. Lately, they've been waking up a little earlier. Some of them are even starting to wake up around 8-ish. So when they do that, I try to make sure they go to bed a little earlier the night before. However, when I try to put them to bed super early, like say 9.30, 10 o'clock, they'll go to bed, but they're not going to go to sleep usually until about 11. So even if they're sitting there quietly in their beds, they're not falling asleep because that's just kind of what they're used to. So, I mean, it's true that, yes, we kind of get to set our own sleep schedule, but we do still have a sleep schedule. We still have a time that we typically go to bed and a time that we typically wake up. It's just later than most people. Okay, so the next assumption is that when you homeschool, you get to do school in your pajamas. And that is definitely possible, and you can do that, but for us, that would be a myth. Um, I like for when we do get up, I like for everybody to get up and get ready and get dressed for the day. The kids have their like morning chores, I call them, but it's basically just make sure your room's clean, make up your bed, they get themselves dressed, teeth brushed, hair brushed, face washed, all that in the morning. So we get completely ready, I get ready, and then we get everybody breakfast, and usually while the kids are eating breakfast, I go back and finish getting myself ready so that we're ready for whatever might happen during the day. Funny story, this week, um, I think it was Wednesday, it was one of those instances where I was like, and this is why we get dressed, because my son was eating his breakfast, sorry. So um, my son was eating his breakfast that my husband had fixed the plate, and for some reason, my husband had put some walnuts on all the kids' plate. And I don't really know why, but those are like something that I normally just eat as a snack. And the kids, now that I think about it, have probably never really had walnuts. They're not really into like, they don't eat like peanuts and pecans and stuff like that. So, but they've all had peanut butter. And as far as we knew, none of our kids had any food allergies. However, my son, as soon as he took a bite of the walnut for the first time, which I didn't actually realize it was his first time having a walnut, but thinking back on it now, I think it was, um, he said his throat started hurting and then he started crying and then he vomited, and then his eyes broke out red, and we all went to the ER. So we were dressed, and we were ready to go, and that was good. Um, he was fine, by the way. He does definitely have an allergic reaction to walnuts, but it wasn't like anaphylactic reaction. There was no anaphylactic shock. He never had any trouble breathing or anything, but he did have an allergic reaction, and we were able, <laughs> I mean, we would have went anyways, but we would have went in our pajamas so we were able to go to the ER fully dressed and we had our teeth brushed and all that good stuff because we do all that before breakfast. So anyways, I like to be dressed because I like to be ready for anything like that or the main reason that we get dressed is because we usually have stuff going on after school, like I said, so that way we don't have to, um, as soon as we're done with school, scramble to get everyone ready to leave. It's just like, okay, if we're done with school, now you guys can play for an hour or however long until we have to leave. 
So that's why I like to just have everybody dressed and ready to go. And then if something pops up where we are just having, you know, we like hit a brick wall and we want to run and go to like a playground or something or just go to like a Chick-fil-A and eat lunch and play on the playground, we can just run and do that. And I don't have to worry about getting everyone dressed and ready because to me, for whatever reason, when they do that first thing in the morning and everyone kind of has a routine down, it's just so much easier than trying to scramble and get everyone ready midday if we want to leave the house. So we get dressed. That was a very long-winded explanation, but we get dressed every day. Okay, the next one is about socialization because like how can you have an assumptions video without the awesome topic of socialization? So the assumption of course is that homeschooler and children are not socialized properly or socialized enough or they're just weird or strange which my kids might be weird or strange I don't know to me they're not but you know to some people I'm sure they are but I think that that's definitely a myth for us and I also feel like for most homeschoolers that is a myth my kids get tons of socialization um, they hang out with each other all day number one so they do have siblings they have to learn a lot about getting along with other people because they are with their brothers and sisters all day, every day. So that is a big task in socialization in and of itself, trust me. Um, also, they all have extracurricular stuff that they do outside of our homeschool. So they are interacting with other children on a daily basis, you know, with teams and sports. We also have awesome neighbors and friends in the neighborhood that we play with so they have friends there and kids that they play with and then they also just get out into the world and socialize with people of all ages adults children everything we're going to the grocery store we're going to the library today we went to the zoo and the kids were talking with the zookeepers um i mean there's just tons of opportunities for them to get out and socialize with other people because even though we are homeschoolers we do not stay at home we are gone way too much honestly in my opinion but they get a lot of socialization they're around family they get to see their grandmas a lot more because they don't have to always be at school and they're not always having homework and their days aren't so filled to the brim that they don't have time to visit family and do extra things so yes they get plenty of socialization so this next one is kind of um, hits close to home but it is that as a homeschooling teacher that you're not qualified like academically to teach your children because you're their parent and you may not have went to school to be a teacher so you're not necessarily qualified and to that I would say for sure that's a myth I mean the fact of the matter is my goal in homeschooling my kids is to teach them to be lifelong learners so I think all you need to be is a lifelong learner as long as I myself am able to find information that I want to learn about and teach it to myself, then I can teach my children. And anyone can do that. You just have to kind of get into that mode and that mindset. Um, number one, there is pl a plethora of ways to learn something, okay? Now we have the internet, which is amazing. You can learn pretty much anything. You've got YouTube, you've got Google, and of course we've got the old tried and true library, okay? And my kids go to the library all the time and I have them check out books on things they're interested in or I check out books on things that I'm teaching currently. Also, the great thing now is that we have these amazing curriculums that teach us or tell us step by step how to teach the material. So I don't have to be an expert in math. The math curriculums or any curriculum for that matter will tell you step by step exactly how to teach it. There's usually videos online if you need more help. There's always like Khan Academy and that you can go and learn the information yourself and then teach it. In most cases, however, you don't even have to learn it yourself. You can teach it based on curriculums or you can just teach your kids to be lifelong learners themselves and to look up information for themselves because the great thing about homeschooling is that they're not limited to our, as in the parent or whoever's teaching them, our base of knowledge, okay? That's not their limitation. It's not that if I don't know something, then I can't teach it to my kids and they won't know it. That is not how it works. So that's great. And so I would say not being qualified to teach your children is definitely a myth. The next one, and this one does annoy me a bit, is that homeschooling does not prepare your children to face the difficulties of life. Like, hello, they don't have to wake up to an alarm clock at 6 a.m. and get ready and get on a bus and wait 45 minutes 
and then get to school and then wait for everyone else to get there and then sit in their chairs and then watch the morning message and then do the pledge and then take roll and then wait a little bit longer and then start their school day. And then, oh, then they have to get in line and they have to raise their hand before they talk and they have to ask to go to the bathroom. And if they're homeschooled, they don't have to do these things, okay? They just don't. So they're not gonna be prepared for life. I don't know. I like I don't even know where to start with that because it's just ridiculous. Okay, this is a myth. Homeschooling definitely prepares your children for life. It prepares them for a lot of things, but it doesn't prepare them to put up with things that are unnecessary. No, it does not because they're not going to have tolerance for, you know, wasting their time because they have gotten to spend so much time um kind of constructing their day and and designing their day and how they want it to go and being responsible for whatever they need to do, being responsible for their learning and their own education, being responsible for things like making sure their rooms are clean and of course any kid that's in public school, private school, whatever, they have to do these things as well. So I'm certainly not discounting that. I'm just saying that yes, public school, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just saying that yes, homeschoolers are prepared for life just like public school children or you know private school children would be as well so um when you're homeschooled though you do get that sense of kind of designing the life that you want i think it kind of lends itself well to that which is what i want my kids to do i don't want them to have to get up super early and go to a job that they're not happy with and i don't want them to be okay with that and so to say that homeschooling might not be preparing them to face hardships in life or the things that are a little bit more uncomfortable in life, I'm kind of okay with that because I want my kids to realize that it is important for them to be happy and for them to be passionate about what they're doing and for whatever they're doing to work for them because everyone is different. So another thing that it doesn't prepare them for is people treating them poorly, like bullying and such. Um, everyone in our school, our home school, treats my children with respect most of the time because they do have siblings. But even if they don't, I'm kind of right there to intervene and say, hey, this is not how we treat people. So I think that's a good thing that my kids aren't sort of being raised to just kind of accept bad behavior from others or accept a lifestyle that makes them unhappy or accept things that are, I guess, hardships. I think it's good for them to learn that they do need to work through things that are hard and tough. But I think that just life in general gives them plenty of that, that they don't need that in their school. Um, they have to work through hardships, of course. Even during school, there's things that don't come easy to them, um, whether it be math or whether it be spelling or what have you, that they're gonna have to work through and you know, persevere and things like that. So it definitely prepares them enough for the things that they need to be prepared for. And then I think it teaches them not to tolerate things that aren't um, helpful to them and their way of living in their belief system. Okay, another assumption about homeschooling is that it's super expensive and that your family needs to be wealthy or at least very comfortable to be able to homeschool. And I would say that one is kind of half and half. It is not expensive to homeschool, but it can be. It does not have to be, but it can be. Um, you can go, if you're talking just curriculum alone, right? Um, aside from the fact that if you have a homeschool room, you're gonna have to put furniture in it and this and that, you know, desks, things like that. But these are all one-time purchases that you can either make if you have the money for them or you can totally homeschool at your kitchen table, which is what we did for the first three or four years that we homeschooled and it's just fine. However, it can get expensive with curriculum if you let it. Um, some of the curriculums we've done in the past, like sunlight, things like that, are a little bit more on the expensive side, but they're not outrageous. And you can homeschool for free if we're talking curriculum. You can get everything you need online through free resources and the library. You're probably gonna have to work a little harder to make it all fit together the way you want it to and what works for you but it's totally doable. I do have a video about um, how I made a free science curriculum for a couple of years and just stuff like that. You can make it yourself, it's just gonna take more work. Like my pre-K curriculum that I did last year with my now kindergartner was 100% free other than I did buy a few little games here and there for her, but those are things that you would probably buy if they were in public school anyways. Just kind of stuff for your kids to play with, educational toys and things. But you can also make it pretty expensive. 
I've done, um, I personally spend about $1,000 a year on curriculum, supplies, and just anything homeschool related. That's kind of my budget, and that's for three kids. So if you divide that by three kids, you know, it's not that much to me, but it sort of depends on your budget. But like I said, you can definitely do it for less and you can definitely do it for more. So that one's kind of half and half. And as far as needing to be um, a wealthy family to be able to homeschool, that's absolutely a myth. However, it does help if you have a two parent household so that one can work and one can homeschool. But don't let that discourage you if you're a single parent or if for whatever reason that just that model does not work for your family, if maybe both parents have to work or whatever, you can still make homeschool happen if you want to. It's just, it's gonna be harder, that's the honest truth. Also, when it comes to having one parent who works and one parent who does not work, which is how our family kind of kind of works, although I would say I still help out with work, but it's I'm, I don't have like a full-time job that I have to go to. Um, it's definitely doable if you cut back on other things. I'm going to do a video soon about how I meal plan and how I save money doing that. And then we're also a one vehicle family, so we save money that way. And yeah, you just kind of budget and you make it work. If homeschooling is important to you, then you can make it work without being super wealthy or spending a ton of money. The next one, and I, this is the last one I'm going to cover in today's video, is the mo the funniest one to me because it's definitely a myth for me, and that is that you have to be a very patient person to be able to homeschool your children and be with them all the time because there's so much togetherness. It's lovely, but it can also be maddening at times. But I'm not a patient person, so that is the number one thing that people say to me when they find out that I homeschool, you know, we're just having a casual conversation about it, and they say, I would love to homeschool my kids, but I don't have the patience for it, or but we would kill each other, or but I couldn't, you know, something on along that variation. And I always say to them, I always say, uh, no, 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 you can do it if I can do it because I do not have a lot of patience. It's something that I'm constantly working on, but um, yeah, you know, you just have to have, you just have to want to do it. If it's important to you, you can do it no matter what, I, because really, I, I mean, you can do it even without having the patience and no, you're not going to kill each other and it's not going to damage your relationship with one another. However, if it is damaging your relationship with your child, then by all means, maybe it's not for you. But I think that, especially if you've homeschooled for a while and you once you get into kind of a groove, it is just as easy to me as it would be to get up and get my kids ready and get them off to school and then do all the things when they get home from school, rushing around, doing homework, I don't know, just all the stuff. It's, it's all hard. There's all variations of it, but it's all, I feel equally difficult, I guess. So yes, homeschooling can be difficult at times just because it takes up so much time. But if you're willing to put the time in, it's not that bad. And as far as the patience with your children, you get used to it. To me, it would be so strange to send them away to school for six or seven hours. That would be so strange. And having them at home is not an issue at all. So, you know, once you get used to it, what I'm trying to say is it's not hard, I guess. Not to say that it's always easy, but it's not hard. Um, like I said, with the patience thing, I work on that constantly, and you're going to have to work on that whether your kids are in public school or not if you don't have patience. But as far as specifically the patience to teach them, it's more about learning the boundaries and kind of like the, the routines and the rules that you have and the expectations that you have for teaching. With my kids, um, they kind of know my expectations by now, and that is when I'm teaching one kid, the other kids have to just kind of raise their hand and wait for me to come over. I don't like them to interrupt me while I'm actively teaching. Like if I'm reading out of our history books or whatever, they can speak without raising their hand, but it has to be related to the history. It cannot be, I'm gonna go get some water or, and that's not the time when they get up and go to the bathroom. It's just those kind of little rules and those little expectations that once your children learn those and once you learn what you need to make it work, it just makes the day a lot smoother and patience isn't so much of an issue. Um, 
I feel like I'm tested a lot more with my patients when we're not doing school because when your kids are being um, my kids when they're fighting more and when they're being like more rambunctious that's always outside of school because during school they're busy they have something to do everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing we have a, we have a rhythm down we just we have it down but we've been doing this for seven years now so we know what we're doing it wasn't like that on day one obviously but now it is we have a rhythm and it works so yeah my patients are definitely tested more outside of school it's usually when they're arguing with one another and during school since I have set routines and expectations it's just easier to manage them and then we're not having to do the homework thing so I know a lot of people will say that they cannot even teach their kids or they can I know a lot of people will tell me how hard it is for them to even do homework with their child and so that's why they say they can't imagine teaching them all day but it is completely different. It is like comparing apples and oranges because when you're sitting down and you're doing homework, number one, they've already had a full day of school. Their brains are probably just over it at this point and they just wanna play or do other things. Number two, you're probably rushing around trying to either get dinner done or you're doing other things and they need to go to soccer or they need to go to cheer practice or whatever, or you guys need to go to church or just you need to leave or you need other to do other things. So everyone's kind of in a hurry. And you're also working with them on something that someone else taught them. So even though it might be something you know how to do, you don't know how the teacher taught it, exactly how she wants them to do it. It's just completely different. When you're doing homeschool, you know everything that your kid is learning because even if you're teaching them from a curriculum, you're still going through it alongside them. Um, and you don't have any homework, by the way, so that's an awesome perk. You just get to do the work and then when it's done after three, four, sometimes five hours, depending on your day, you're completely done. There's no homework, there's no more school. And so your kids can learn from you and you can teach them even if you don't have a ton of patience, I promise, because I am in that boat and we make it through the day great and we still love each other at the end of it and, and they learn, so you can do it. Um, so that's it for my list of homeschool assumptions for today's video. If you've heard any other assumptions or if you have any yourself that you want me to talk about or just something that you've heard someone else say to you, please let me know below because I think these are kind of funny. Some of them are a bit annoying, but most of them are just kind of funny. So let me know how the, uh, any assumptions that you have and if they're true for your homeschool or not, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.